How's it going today? I am Richard from Reefs.com. Hey guys, Richard of Fishing Auto Channel and Reefs.com. We're on the show floor of Reefapalooza Orlando 2022, and I am here in Reef Nutrition's booth with one and only Copa Pagod, Chad Clayton. Good to I see you, try. man. Hey, always good to see you. We have this amazing new product that he wants to showcase for us. Chad? Yeah, so today we're talking about pack pods. This is our newest copepod concentrate. So these are these pods are not alive. Mm -hmm. They're very similar to our arctopods and roadie feast as they're a zooplankton animal. You know, the refrigeration is required for these guys okay. and come in a variety of sizes. So why did we come out with this product? Well. Um, originally, we, are, we were buying these in frozen form from a collector in Alaska, and we wanted to start selling them into the, sh into the food shrimp industry because gotcha. instead of using Artemia to mm -hmm. feed to post-larval shrimp, yeah. these shrimp farmers are interested in using a copepod because okay. copepods have a better nutritional profile, right. better digestibility, and, and it's just an overall yeah. really Healthier good food. food item, right? right. And so getting the shrimp to eat these mm -hmm. is gonna be very important for the shrimp farmers because then the shrimp growth rates go up and then they can get them onto the dry shrimp diets. Gotcha. Uh, and so we are buying these in frozen form and what we decided was, we I thought, you know, this is a small copepod. It's about 500 to 800 micron. Mm -hmm. And I figured, you know what, this would be great for smallmouth fish that are real finicky, like right. anthias, mandarin dragonets, seahorses, pipefish, things like that. Yeah. And also um, individuals that are NPS coral keepers, right. non-photosynthetic corals. They were really interested in a smaller zooplankton food item for their corals, and right. and so I, I told them about this, and they said, yeah, we would absolutely love to try that. Yeah. Um, and, and so you know, a lot of those guys have like octocorals, gorgonians, very small polyps, mm -hmm. and so far they they've um, been very well received. The animal being fed at the coral. Gotcha. So. You know, you guys are really known for, I guess, really dense food. I mean, like really concentrated, right? So I'm thinking because you know I'm looking at the color, and you could see the by the color how. It, thick everything is. Yeah. So if we were to com like com compare to, let's say, you were talking about your Apex pod earlier, yeah. right? How, how would you say this would fare to? Like how much more is it in here? Right, so because yeah. It's, because it's not alive, I'm, I'm assuming you could pack a lot more we in there. We can pack way more in there, absolutely. Yeah, so the Apex pods, um, I, I grow and bottle the Apex pods, okay. and I pack about a little over 3,000 per bottle. Okay. And so the equivalent to like something like that into here would be like 50 of those bottles would wow. be in this one bottle. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, if you can get those finicky fish right. that Which really is, like to yeah. eat live things, but you can get them to eat something like this, and we can talk a little bit about that, right. you know, later on, um, then this is this is highly useful because it's oh, very definitely. concentrated. Right. You don't have to buy 50 bottles of Apex pods right. More to feed those animals. Bottle. Yeah, you can feed, and this, you can also feed the corals, right. not just the fish. So. Yeah, so there's definitely better bang for the buck if you, could, if you could get them to eat something like this. And it, I see a big need in that because whenever we buy a finicky fish, I guess we, essentially, we take a gamble on it. Like, for example, some of the highly sought after fish like purple queen anthias and stuff like that or like you know like very high end wrasses that have very small mouths or even stuff like you know like gosh like you know copper band butterflies you yeah know, you know i mean those are like something hard to get to eat and a lot of them will perish because they will just wither away right and so if you were to, to get them to eat with something like this i think that'd be great i mean even dragonets you know like mandarins yep you know yep. Yep. so i mean this is like I, I definitely see a need in the market for something like this and if you could wean them on this i mean i think this is a big game changer oh absolutely and and i'm glad that you brought that up because in fact we have some store owners mm -hmm. that are getting in wild caught mandarins really? and they were trying this food on them them, and those animals were eating these copepods really quickly hmm. and it was very shocking to these store owners yeah. and so that word is starting to spread a lot yeah. of other stores are looking into this right, right. importers are looking into this food distributors yeah. um, fish growers things yeah. like that are really interested in this animal yeah. because copepods are a very good food source they're a natural food source right, when right. these animals see this yeah. they recognize it as food even yeah. if it's not alive so that's that we're really excited about that. Yeah, and you know it's funny because early in the video you mentioned about you know being commercially and, and such. You know people don't realize how small our industry actually is, and to for people and actually like you know human food industry and stuff like that to take notice and use your product. I mean it speaks in volume of the quality of your of your product. I know for a fact you know because I you know I'm originally from Korea in my in my native land we have a lot of oyster farms and they use your phytoplankton to feed their oysters. Yep. You know, so yep. I mean, you know, like and if they were to using this food, you know, shrimp farmers using this food to culture their, I mean, um, shrimps, I mean, 
it, it speaks in volume of the quality of the food. Absolutely, and, yeah. It's it's really cool to be involved in global food production. Right. In in some small way. Yeah. You know, we feed the little guys. The little guys grow up, and then we eat them. Right. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a cycle. Food. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and and you know, there's a lot of sustainability built into all that. So sure. that's really cool. The other cool thing I forgot to mention is that there are also fish hatcheries that are interested in this, because fish hatcheries, you know, they they have brood stock. Right. They have fish, they, they, you know, the broodstock releases eggs or they lay eggs. Right. The, the larvae hatch and they have to feed the larvae live feed organisms. Yeah. And one of the biggest things that lo fish hatcheries like to do is wean those animals off of live feeds. Right. And so not only can they use our TDO, our, our granulated and pelleted food, to wean those animals off of live feed organisms, they can also incorporate something like this right. into the weaning process. Right. Because instead of using Artemia, which isn't really a natural food source, mm -hmm. you can use a copepod to wean those very small, we're talking like angelfish, yeah. tangs, you know, yeah. some of the more difficult ones. Gotcha. And you get this into their bodies, and their growth rates are, you know, are much better. They're more healthy. They're more robust. They right. put on good coloration early on. There's a lot of positive things. Gotcha. Wow, that's a lot of information to just absorb. I hope you guys learn a lot. And if you guys are trying a new finicky fish in your aquarium, and let's be honest, we all like to try some of this, uh, this stuff. Personally, I would like to try these foods on Purple Queen Antheus. It's my, one of my favorite Antheus, but they're just so finicky, and I haven't had a great success with them. However, I would like to try them down the road and see how well they do, and just have them in my aquarium and just enjoy them. Chad, thank you so much for spending some time with us at this show. I hope you have a great show. and. Best of luck with this new pack pots, and I hope to see more innovation down the road from you guys. Right on. Thank you very much. Take care, bud.